All right, let's show what it looks like to do some controls, uh, controls for linear programs or debugging. So we've got our four people volunteer assignment sheet here, um, and let's make a copy of it. Not just copy, not just copy and paste into a new sheet, but right click, um, right click, choose move or copy, create a copy, and you can choose where to put it. All right, so let's think what would make this particularly easy to solve. I think if person one wanted time block one and really hated everything else, we could say they hate it. I mean, we said stuff has to be, uh, stuff was between zero and nine, but there's no reason it has to be. We can just make it whatever we want. So here it should be pretty clear that person one should get time block one and so forth. Um, so now let's uh, run solver. We've already got it set up. It says it found a solution. And sure enough, person one got time slot one, person two got time slot two, person three got time slot three, and so forth. Um, oh, actually, we needed that. Um, so as it was, uh, person two got time slot two, even though they said they really didn't want it, our objective function was um, uh, was this one plus that one plus that one plus this hundred. So it did actually do the right thing. Um, having it go in order like that might not be the best control. We could try to do it in something of a random-ish kind of order. Um, uh, let's do that. Um, just in case there was something about how we constructed the spreadsheet that would make it want to do uh, person one in time slot A, person two in time slot B. So. Let's run solver again, and sure enough, we see the same pattern here as we saw here. So that gives us some confidence that our solver is working correctly. We can see we got the objective function value that makes total sense. Everyone got uh, one point on their preferences. Let's take a look at the scheduling tab. Uh, before when we did this, we got uh, that objective function value. and. We never really checked is that right or not. We got this uh, graph of numbers of staff required and number of staff actually scheduled and excess staff. We didn't really check whether that was right or not. It seemed reasonable at least. So to check whether our code is doing stuff right, we're going to make a copy. Um, and now we'll ask ourselves, what would make this problem particularly easy to solve? Well, if the needed staff was maybe the same in every time slot, so we'll say 10 in every time slot, so that's our number needed here, um, and, it's, and also if the pay for every time slot, um, we could say what if it was a dollar for the first shift, two dollars for the second, and so forth, we know that'll try to have more people come in at 8 than at 9. Um, so now let's run solver. Um, all the same stuff as before. It says solver found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. And uh, what did it end up scheduling? It said everyone come in at the beginning because that's the cheapest. And then it didn't have anyone come in during the middle of the day. And then we needed 10 more people to come in at uh, 1600 hours to fill in for the people who were leaving then. And we got no excess staff, so that seems like it makes sense. Um, that's kind of a boring example. We could copy it again, create another somewhat more interesting example. Um, maybe we'd have 10 staff needed at the first hour. Um, uh, let's see, we could go four hours at 10 and then maybe another um, four hours at 15 and then another four hours at 21. You don't want to have too much numerical coincidence going on, so that's why I'm not using 10, 20, 30. Um, we could try uh, 22 here. Um, and we could use the same pay system, or maybe we could um, start it the other way, just in case something was um, funny about our spreadsheet in one particular order. And run it again. And now we'd have to stop and think, 
does this solution make sense? Um, but at least it's something that we can think about systematically.